Hey everyone, how's it going? Juan Das here. And today I wanted to talk about uh, a question I had come up on my comping video a little while ago. And it was a really good question. It was, how do you comp for a soloist without stepping on their toes or getting in their way? And I think this is a valuable thing to consider. Uh, especially because sometimes when we get into comping, we get really excited about, okay, we want to be interactive. We want to communicate with the soloist. Uh, we want to be, you know, really communicative with how we play, but sometimes doing so gets in the way of playing with a soloist and can be a little frustrating for a soloist, um, especially if you try interact too much. So I wanted to go over a couple of tips, uh, namely two in particular, that I think will really help clarify a lot and this is working on the assumption that you're probably already playing a little too much. So these are just a few things to keep in mind mentally uh, to fit in a little better. So let's dive right in. The first thing I would recommend is understand what your role is as an accompanist. What, is a, what does a comping instrument do? What does a comper do for someone? Well. We provide a solid harmonic foundation for people to play on top of or play around with. And remembering our role as a comper actually kind of puts us in a better perspective to help support somebody. So, for example, I was playing Someday My Prince Will Come earlier, uh, playing it in G. Now, sometimes we might get caught up in playing all these substitutions or playing all these chords or putting all these harmonic motions in. When really, sometimes what a musician just needs to really play a solid solo and really feel free to express whatever they want to on top of the changes is... Sorry, I uh, messed up on that D7, should be an E7. But you see what I'm going for. It's just playing the time, playing rhythm and giving the illusion that, okay, here are the changes, here's time, this is what's going on. Sure, as a comper, you can comment in response to what a soloist is doing, and that's part of the whole call and response dynamic in jazz or improvisation in general. But you have to pick your spots really carefully. And it kind of involves anticipating where a soloist is going, um, or maybe listening to where they have breaks in their phrases. But the most important thing is remember your role as a comper. Remember to just sit in the time. Add some movement. And maybe punctuate some movement or punctuate an idea or maybe play a melodic phrase as a counter melody to communicate and support the soloist. But remember at the end of the day, your role as a comper is to support the soloist, not be a chord soloist, so to speak. This actually leads me to my next point and kind of, it's a larger point, so I'll kind of leave it there, but it's experiment with opposites experiment, really listen to where the soloist is at, and working with opposites can give you a good spread in the context of a group. It allows you to really find your place. For example, if a soloist is playing high, you don't want to be playing all the way up here. Maybe you can do it to accentuate going back down into the, the lower register of the guitar. For 
for example, like that's a really beautiful motion and really sets up a sharp contrast, but if the soloist is playing high, maybe play low and support the low end a little better. Likewise, if a soloist is in the lower register of their instrument, you don't want to cover them up by playing too many low end heavy voicings. You might want to experiment with some mid range voicings or some higher register voicings. Again, also listen to their intensity and judge accordingly. There are many factors that go into this. For example, are they playing extremely sparse? Okay, if they're playing extremely sparse, you probably don't want to have, uh, using this tune as an example, uh, let's see, like, yeah, like, you don't want to play, I'm sure I played an F major 7 there, but the point still stands, you don't want to really be having a lot of chord motion if they're playing very sparse. Likewise, if a soloist is maybe playing very intricately and playing with a lot of, um, a lot of technique, or really just blazing through the changes, you just want to play the changes. Sure, maybe you can comment, and if you can pick up fast enough what they're doing harmonically, maybe you can allude to it but you don't want to take that spotlight away from the soloist. And more importantly, the more you try to kind of get in their world too much, the more you end up getting in their way. So I hope this lesson was helpful for you guys and gave you just a quick perspective on how to comp for a soloist, how to really approach supporting someone without getting in their way too much. So if you like this video, please do like, comment, subscribe. It really means the world and actually helps this channel grow. We're almost at 1k subscribers, so thank you so much for all the support, and I'll see you in the next video.